Peace, family. I got a long video coming for you guys today, so you got to get your uh, scriptures ready, get your uh, your Bible, get your calculator, and uh, get your notepad. You're going to take some notes and get some understanding today. All right, so I'm going to open up with this uh, verse. It's going to be Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Okay, Shalom Aleikum, Shemi Yashar Yehuda, Kal Halal Yahuwah Bahashem Yahusha Hamashiach. The title of this video is 2300 Days Slash Years Prophecy and 70 Weeks of Years Prophecy Fulfilled in 2025 AD and 34 AD respectively. Again, the title of this video is 2300 days slash years prophecy and 70 weeks of years prophecy fulfilled in 2025 AD and 34 AD respectively. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. The Most High Power, Yahuwah, who reveals his secrets of the times mentioned in 2nd Ezra chapter 14, verse 5, and Amos chapter 3, verse 7. So let's get a glimpse at one of those scriptures. And this is uh, Amos chapter 3, verse 7, and it says, Surely Yahuwah Elohim will do nothing but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Okay, so we know that the Most High will reveal his secrets to the prophets, which is why we will be analyzing the book of Daniel, chapter 8, as well as Daniel chapter 9, and I'm also going to touch on a little bit in Daniel chapter 12. And we will be uh, studying charts and going over some history to flesh out difficult and mysterious prophecies. The purpose of this video is not to set exact dates for the Messiah's return, but we can know the year and general time frame. So let's begin with Daniel's prophecy in the book of Daniel chapter 9, and we'll be reading uh, verse 1 through 3 and verse 19. Again, that's going to be Daniel chapter 9, verse 1. So picking up at verse 1, and it reads, In the first year of Darius, the son of Ashurius, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. Verse 2. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of Yahuwah came to Jeremiah, the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Verse 3, And I set my face unto Yahuwah Elohim, 
to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. All right, I'm going to skip down for the sake of time, going down to verse 19. Verse 19 reads, O Adonai, hear, O Adonai, forgive, O Adonai. Hearken and do, defer not for thine own sake. O my Elohim, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. Okay, so in these verses, we see that Daniel and the first group of Israelites were taken into captivity in the year 605 BC by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. Okay, so the events of Daniel chapter 9 occurred in 538 BC. Daniel knew by reading Jeremiah's scroll that his people were nearing the end of their prophesied 70 years of captivity. I just want to take a quick look at Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 10. You can see right here, it says, For thus saith Yahuwah, that after 70 years uh, be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. Saying that they will return back to Jerusalem after 70 years being in captivity. And this is the scroll that Daniel was reading from. Okay, so in Daniel chapter 9, verse 20 through 27, we will analyze the vision, which is mare in the Hebrew, of the 490 years or 70 weeks prophecy. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into Daniel chapter 9, verse 20 through 23. All right, and it reads, And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel, and presenting my supplication before Yahuwah, my Elohim, for the holy mountain of my Elohim, Go down to verse 21, and it reads, Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. Verse 22, And he informed me, and he talked with me, and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. Verse 23, at the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth and I am come to show thee for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. Okay, so before I go into verses uh, 24 through 27 of Daniel chapter 9, I will preface with confirming that this prophecy that we're reading about is messianic. Again, that this prophecy, I'm confirming that this prophecy is messianic and deals with a jubilee cycle of 70 weeks with seven years for each week, totaling 490 years. This chart on the screen 
outlines how the Israelites tracked time by Jubilee cycles, which is every 50th year as per Leviticus chapter 25, verse 10. Here's another chart showing you how we uh, track time. And uh, this chart is outlined as so 59 boxes and each row represents seven years. And uh, so we have uh, the first row represents seven years. And we know from uh, scripture that every seven years, the Israelites had a Shemitah or a sabbatical year. And in that year, we would not uh, do any work in the in the fields or in our, our farms, our gardens, and we would allow the land to rest. And that was a uh, Sabbath for the land every seven years. So you can see we have these 49 boxes here. And um, the 50th uh, box would be in the next set of 49 boxes. So the 50th box would be the Jubilee year. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at Leviticus right quick. All right, so this is uh, Leviticus chapter 25, verse 10, and it reads, And ye shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof, and it shall be a jubilee unto you. And you shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. So the 50th year, again, was made holy by the Most High Power. And I just showed you the chart. outlining how we arrive at the 50th year and how every seven years was holy as well. But the 50th year was uh, uh, most holy. Okay. So let's go to All right, let me see if I can get back on track. Okay, so um, uh, let's see here. All right, so all right, so I will preface again with confirming that um, <laughs> that the prophecy is messianic and deals with a jubilee cycle of seventy weeks, with seven years for each week, totaling four hundred and ninety years. This chart outlines how the Israelites track time by Jubilee cycles, which is every 50th year as per Leviticus 25.10, which I went over already. All right. So the chart has, again, seven rows of seven boxes <clears throat> with each row representing seven years with the seventh year <clears throat> being a sabbatical or Shemitah year of rest for the land. Okay, so after 49 years, the first day of the next set of 49 boxes is both the first day as well as the 50th year of Jubilee as outlined in Leviticus 25 and 10. So this would be the proper format for understanding Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. Let's see. Now let me see if I can pull up uh, Daniel chapter 9 right quick. All right, so let's get a look at Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. All right, Daniel 9, 24 reads, it reads, uh, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy 
and to anoint the most holy. Okay, so verse 24 is just giving you an overview of what will happen within the 70 weeks or the 490 year period. Also, we have biblical uh, precedent established for a year for a day principle. Again, we have a biblical precedent established for a year equaling a day principle. And this is found in the book of uh, Numbers, chapter 14, verse 34. All right, so here is uh, Numbers chapter 14, verse 34. Let me just read that right quick. And it says, and uh, after the number of the days in which ye searched out the land, even 40 days each day for a year, shall you bear your iniquities, even 40 years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. So here, just letting you know that uh, the Bible uses uh, days for years. And you can also um, back that up in, in uh, Ezekiel chapter four, verse six, it says the same thing that days are equated as years as well. Okay, so let's move on to verse 25. This is Daniel chapter nine, verse 25. And it reads, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. And the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Okay, so verse 25 breaks down the prophecies that would be fulfilled within 69 weeks of years, totaling 483 years, beginning with King Artaxerxes' decree in 457 B.C. All right, so this is an image of uh, King Artaxerxes here. And he was the king of Persia that made the decree or gave the decree to rebuild Jerusalem, the walls and the streets. So here's another image of King Artaxerxes and again, he was the one that gave the decree in the year 457 to rebuild Jerusalem. So the 69 weeks are broken into seven weeks of years or seven times seven, totaling 49 years from the decree in 457 B.C. Again, the 69 weeks are broken into seven weeks of years. or seven times seven, totaling 49 years from the decree in 457 BC. Okay, so when you subtract these 49 years, you will arrive at 408 BC. And as you can see from the chart, you see the um, 408 BC and again you once you you see the 49 years here on the side once you subtract those 49 years from 457 BC you arrive at 408 BC and in 408 BC we had a significant event and uh the walls of Jerusalem and the city was uh, uh finished being re rebuilt and repaired in that year and that was also a Shemitah or a sabbatical year which is why uh, 
it was broken down like that in uh, in Daniel when it said there would be seven years and and then sixty two. So it, it's broken down for the, for the seven years. The seven years represents the forty nine, and then the sixty two weeks it, it represents the four hundred and thirty four. So when you add those two together, you get four hundred and eighty three years for the sixty nine weeks. And you can also reference in Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 15, that the walls and the streets in the city was com completed. The repair, the repairs were, were done in uh, 408 BC. And you can, again, that's found in Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 15. All right. The 62 weeks of years plus the seven weeks of years which equals 483 years subtracted from 457 BC, you get 26 to 27 AD. And you can see the 26 to 27 AD here. So again, once you subtract those 483 years from the number here, 457 BC, you're going to get a surplus on the AD side and it's going to, you're going to arrive at the date of 27 or 26 AD. And there was a, another significant event that happened at this particular time, and that was the anointing of the Messiah after he was baptized by John the Baptist. And you can reference that in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. Okay, so now let's move on to verse 26. This is uh, Daniel chapter 9, verse 26. Let's read that one. And it reads, And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city, and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. Okay, so verse 26 explains that after 69 weeks of years, or Shemitahs, the Messiah would be cut off or crucified, and that the people of the prince which would be the Messiah, the people of the Messiah would cause the city of Jerusalem and the temple to be destroyed because of their rejection of him and of truth. All right, so let's move on to the final verse in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. All right. And it reads, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Okay, so verse 27 explains that the last week of the 70 weeks of years prophecy, we know that Christ ministry lasted for three years as per Luke chapter 3 verse 1 and verse 23. So those two verses they, they confirm that Christ's ministry lasted for three years and that he also was 30 years old when he began his ministry. We read that Christ confirmed the new covenant with his apostles during Passover in the third year of his ministry.
apostles at third year of his ministry. Okay, so the Messiah's crucifixion in the middle of the 70th week spiritually caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease in the temple in the year 30 AD. Okay, so this occurred physically in the year 70 AD with the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple by the Edomite Romans via Emperor Vespasian, or excuse me, Vespasian and his general Titus. Okay, so here's an image of the Emperor Vespasian. And his son, Titus, was the one who led the attack against the Israelites from 66 uh, to 70 AD, ending in the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. Okay. The last three and a half years of the 70 weeks of years totaling 490 years was completed in 34 to 35 AD. Let me go back and get that picture. All right, so here's a picture outlining the 70 weeks. We see at 457 BC is when the decree was given by King Artaxerxes. And uh, he gave the decree to begin the uh, rebuilding of Jerusalem. And we see going all the way down to um, 34 AD. And that's total, that, that brings the completion of 490 weeks, uh, 490 years. So we got seven times 70. And that gives you, of course, 490, the completion of the 490 years was actually uh, fulfilled in 34 AD. All right, so here's another uh, chart outlining that as well showing you the uh, 483 years that transpired from 457 BC to 483 years again. That's when uh, Christ was baptized. And again, that was in 27, 26 to 27 AD. He was baptized and he um, began the very next week, that 70th week. Remember, he made it into the middle of the 70th week before he was cut off. And uh, the completion of the 70th week, again, that was is fulfilled in 34 AD, which is a jubilee year, a jubilee cycle that was completed at that time. Okay, so next let's move on to the second part of my video concerning the 2300 days which are years prophecy and how they are calculated and how they uh, culminate in the fulfillment uh, in 2025. So these 2,300 days are years. They culminate in fulfillment in the year 2025. And I'm going to go over how I uh, arrived at that uh, number. Okay, so the bulk of the scripture that I'll be reading from is Daniel chapter 8 and a little from Daniel chapter 12. So again, it's going to be coming from Daniel chapter 8 as well as Daniel chapter 12. The vision of Daniel chapter 8 took place in 
the year 551 BC under the Babylonian rule. And that was uh, King Belshazzar. Okay. All right, so let's move on. Again, that was uh, 551 BC when uh, Daniel chapter 8 vision uh, took place. All right, so we're going to begin in uh, Daniel chapter 8, verses 1. We're going to pick up and read verse 3 through 4. All right, so this is Daniel chapter 8, verse 1. And it reads, In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto, unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at the first. All right, going down to verse 3. Then I lifted up mine eyes, and I saw, and behold, there stood before uh, the river a ram which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. Verse 4. Verse 4. And I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward so that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. All right, these verses are prophesying about the Medo-Persian Empire. And this Medo-Persian Empire was founded by King Cyrus in 550 B.C. And here's an image of uh, King Cyrus seated on his throne. And he was known as Cyrus the Great, the founder of the Persian or the Medo-Persian Empire, which Daniel had a vision about in uh, chapter eight, which we're reading about. All right, so again, his kingdom lasted, or the uh, Medo-Persian kingdom lasted from 550 B.C. to 330 B.C. All right, so let's pick up at verse, uh, verses 5 through 8, 5 through 8 now. This is Daniel chapter 8, verse 5, and it reads, And as I was considering, behold, a he-goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. Going down to verse 6. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in the fury of his power. Verse 7. And I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with color against him and smote the ram and break his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him. And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Verse eight, therefore the he goat waxed very great. And when he was strong, the great horn was broken. And for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. Okay, so these verses introduce a new world power 
to dethrone the Medo-Persian Empire. And this would be the Greeks, which are led by Alexander the Great. Okay, so here's a pic of Alexander the Great. He's the, uh, the man who led the overthrowing or the toppling of the Medo-Persian world empire. Okay, again, so Alexander the Great, he defeated the Medo-Persians by 331 BC. Alexander is the great horn that we read about. But Alexander died in the year 323 BC, creating a struggle for power between Alexander's generals or the successors who were known by the term Diodoci. These generals or successors numbered 10 men, and these all fought in four great wars called the Diodoci Wars. And these Diodoci Wars, they lasted from 322 BC to 275 BC. Five of these Diodoci generals named themselves kings. We had uh, King Cassander, which ruled Macedon. So here's an image of a uh, King Cassander here. We had King Lysimachus who ruled Thrace, one of the Diodoci successors or generals that followed Alexander the Great. We have King Ptolemy, which ruled Egypt, another one of the successors or the Diodoci that ruled out there Alexander the Great. And we have King Seleucus, which ruled over Asia. And finally, we have a coin here. This is a coin of the King Antigonus. And King Antigonus ruled over Asia Minor and Syria. This is King Antigonus. And he ruled over Asia Minor and Syria. Okay, so the fourth Diodoci War from 308 to 301 BC reduced the Greek rulers to, to four kingdoms. So remember, initially we had up to 10 generals all vying for rulership after the death of Alexander the Great in 323 BC. And again, uh, remember there were four Diodoci Great Wars when all these men were fighting against each other, trying to uh, be the next one to rule the kingdom. So again, the fourth Diodoci War was from 308 BC to 301 BC, which reduced the Greek rulers to four kingdoms, which we read are read about in Daniel chapter 7, verse 6, and Daniel chapter 8, verse 8. And those, again, those four rulers, again, are the four horns that we read about in Daniel 8 and 8. So here's an image of the four remaining uh, Diodoci successors or generals that followed out there. Alexander the Great. Okay, so let's pick up in verses 9 through 14 in Daniel chapter 8. All right, so this is Daniel chapter 8, verse 9, and it says, And out of one of them, 
came forth a little horn, which waxed exceedingly or exceeding great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And we know the pleasant land, of course, is Jerusalem. Okay, let's get verse 10. Verse 10 reads, and it waxed great even to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the hosts and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Verse 11, yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the hosts, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Verse 12, and and host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. And it cast down the truth to the ground and it practiced and prospered. Verse 13. Then I heard one saint speaking and another saint said, said unto that certain saint which spake, how long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? Going down to verse 14. Verse 14 reads, And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed, Okay, so in verses 9 through 14, in these verses we see that the little horn, which is also mentioned in Daniel chapter 7, verse 8, being a ruler from the fourth beast of the Roman Empire, Daniel chapter 8, verse 9 explains that the little horn ruler, or that a little horn ruler, will come out of the four horns of the Greeks. The mention of the little horn in both Daniel chapter 7 and Daniel chapter 8 reveals that the Greeks and the Romans are kindred nations from the Edomites. The only people in the Bible that Elohim or God said that he hates in both the book of Malachi chapter 1 verse 3 and Romans chapter 9, verse 13, these are the Edomites. The same people who killed the Messiah and over 1 million Jews in 30 AD and 70 AD, respectively, at the crucifixion of Christ in 30 AD and the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. So again, these are uh, an Edomite people just going by different names, uh, calling themselves Greeks and Romans. Okay, so Daniel chapter 8, verse 13 through 14, we see gets into the 2300 days prophecy. The 2300 days, so this is going to be the key part what I'm focusing on next. So this is, again, this is an image of the little horn that came out of the four horns of the Diodoce four generals. Okay, so again, the 2300 days are really 2300 years. And the year in which the countdown begins is two. 75 BC. Again, the year that the countdown for the 2300 days prophecy begins is the year 275 BC, which is the year of the successors or Diodoci wars were finished. 
So remember that the Dia Dolce, they fought wars from 322 all the way down to 275 BC. And this is when all the dust had settled. Because remember, I told you at first that they started out with uh, 10 different generals all vying for power and rulership of the uh, Alexander the Great who had passed kingdom. Okay, so uh, it was the descendant of the Diodoci Seleucus in 168 BC by the name of Antiochus the Fourth. Let's get a pic of him. Okay, so this is an image of Antiochus the Fourth. He's a name of, of Seleucus. So again, the descendant of the Diadochi or the successor Seleucus in 168 BC by the name of Antiochus IV was responsible for, for the murder of, or the ordering of the murder of 40,000 Jews and the desecration of the temple by bringing pigs to sacrifice into the temple and setting up a statue of Zeus in the holy sanctuary. So this guy, Antiochus IV, was responsible for murdering 40,000 Jews. And not only did he stop there, he brought a, a forbidden unclean animal into the temple and sacrificed the animal to Zeus. So he put up a statue of a false god in the temple and sacrificed a pig in the temple. Both all those things were um, abominations to the Israelites and desolations. Okay, so when you subtract 275 BC from 2300 years or days, remember that the days are years. I brought that scripture out already. And again, those, those scriptures are. Numbers 14 and 34, as well as uh, I think it's Ezekiel 6 and 4. OK, when you when you subtract those those numbers, 275 B.C. from 2300 years, you arrive at the date of 2025 A.D. Okay, so we know that the Messiah will return by the year 2030 AD because we have the prophecy of Hosea chapter 6, verse 2, which let me get that right quick. Hold on. Okay, so we have that prophecy in Hosea 6 and 2, which says that Christ will save and revive his people after two days. And we know that the days are uh, also equated for uh, a thousand years. So we know that in um, in the book of Psalms chapter 90, that a day can also be equivalent to a thousand years. Okay, so when it says um, after two days, it's speaking of 2,000 years. Let me get that again. And it says after two days or after 2,000 years, will he revive us? In the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. OK, now, if you go back and look at Hosea, chapter five, verse 15, it brings out the fact that the person that is going to do these things, speaking of the Messiah here, it says that he's, he's going to come and he's going to leave. So he's going to come. And then he's going to leave. And then it says after he comes and he leaves, he's going to revive us. He's going to raise us up after two days. So remember, Christ, again, died in 30 AD. So if you take two days from 30 AD with the principle of a day being a thousand years, as outlined in the book of Psalms, chapter 90, we know from uh, from two days from 30 AD, you get you. It, you will arrive at the date of 2030.
Okay, so um, I'm going to finish out in closing uh, just to touch on the 1290 days and the 1335 days prophecy that's found in the book of Daniel chapter 12, verses 11 and 12. So let me go ahead and read those two verses right quick. And it gives, and I'm going to give you a breakdown of my understanding of the 1290 days and the 1335 days. So let's read that. And it reads from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. All right, going down to verse 12. It says, Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Okay, so what these verses are explaining to my understanding is that from Nebuchadnezzar's or the time of Nebuchadnezzar's dream that he had, remember in Daniel chapter two, which occurred in the year 603 BC, there would be 1290 days or years, which encompasses the carrying away of the first group of Israelites in 605 BC to the final destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. And the building of the Islamic Dome of the Rock Temple. This is a Muslim temple built on the Temple Mount of the Israelites. And this happened in the year 688 AD. All right, so what this is bringing out is that it would be 1290 years between the time that Nebuchadnezzar had that dream in 603 BC of the kingdoms that would rule the world until the time of Christ's return. Again, 1290 years from the time that Nebuchadnezzar had this dream. Again, this dream occurred in 603 BC. So if you subtract 1290 from 603 BC, you will arrive at the year 688 AD. And the significant event that occurred in 688 AD is the building of the Dome of the Rock on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. So that is the first part of uh, my understanding of the 1290 years and what they represent. All right, the final 1335 days or years count from the building of the Dome of the Rock. Remember that occurred in 688 AD plus 1335 days or years, which equates to the year 2023 to 2024 for the completion of the prophecy of Daniel chapter 12. Okay, so with this uh, information, we can reasonably expect the Messiah's return between the years of 2023 and 2025. And we know for sure that it would be before 2030. So we have all of these prophecies that um, gives us the blessed hope of his return and his exaltation of the Israelites and the subjugation of the Gentile nations. So we look forward to Christ's return. So if anyone had any questions, um, Concerning the video, just put them in the comment section and I'll get back to you. Yeah, so this is the image of what happens or what we can expect to happen. This is the image that uh, Nebuchadnezzar had the dream in Daniel chapter 2. 
was the world uh, empires that would rule the world until Christ's return. We know that the stone that breaks the image at the feet is Christ. Christ is that stone that the builders rejected. That was the leaders of Israel rejected and uh, which caused his uh, crucifixion in uh, 30 AD at the hands of the uh, Edomites via the Romans. And we see, of course, that uh, Nebuchadnezzar was the head of gold. We had the Medo-Persian Empire, the uh, torso of silver, and the uh, we had the middle section of uh, bronze, which represented the the uh, did I mention the per yeah that represents the Greeks, and then we have the legs, uh, which represent the Roman Empire, and we see the stone again hitting the uh, the image at the base or at the feet, destroying the uh, revived Roman Empire. Destroying the little horn. The little horn again is going to be coming out of the Greek Empire as well as the Roman Empire because those two people, again, they are kindred people. They are all Edomites and uh, they are ruling at this particular time. We know there's plenty of scriptures that would uh, verify, you know, what I'm bringing out here. So we can expect this uh, this end to to come very soon. When we can see the heavens opening up and Christ coming to bring salvation to those that keep the law, statutes, and commandments, as well as the faith in the Son, Yahushua. All right, Shalom.